Okay, so you're going to put this mister on your air conditioner. And you've heard the claims 30%, 50%, 150%, just a joke there. Uh, and it's going to save all this money and make your compressor last forever and all that stuff. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refer you to a series of videos I did that I will put up in the corner here and also in the, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I did some tests on these things and you can see what the results were. There were about five videos I think there. Okay, but you see this mystery, you think, well, this thing, uh, this will work. But I don't want calcium all over the coil. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a filter in. Okay, now here's a filter. Now this thing's about $15, uh, and it's made by Orbit, and it's actually made for their misting systems. What does it do? Is it a filter? Does it filter out calcium? Of course not. You want calcium filtered out, you're going to have to do a lot more than that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the inside of this thing. Now, we've got small beads, large beads, okay, that's about it. There's a, there's a screen in there that'll keep dogs and cats out of it, but that's about it. Uh, but there's these little beads. Okay, the beads, as far as I can tell, what they do is they, they dissolve slowly over the time that's used. I, I think they tell you to replace them every year. What I believe they do is they just grease the calcium so it goes through the mister easier. That's all it does. It's actually adding more crap into the water than, uh, than was there before. So not a real help there. If you wanted to uh, reduce or almost eliminate uh, minerals in the water, you'd have to use something like an RO system that's reverse osmosis. Uh, far more complicated system, far more expensive to put in. Uh, you know, this filter is like $15. Uh, you can put three to $500 into a reverse osmosis system. Um, you know, just to start with, and then you have to change filters. Okay, uh, and do you really want absolutely pure water? No, you really don't. Pure H2O tends to be corrosive. Now your coil, most likely that outdoor coil has copper coils and aluminum fins. That's dissimilar metals. If there's electrolysis, which there usually is a little bit anyway, the fins are going to be sacrificial and they will go away. It'll, if you've ever had a, uh, an air conditioner and you had a dog in the same yard, the dogs will oftentimes mark their territory. And they mark it with urine. They may mark your air conditioner. And all the fins will just come off. And all it is is just bare to me. But back to the pure water. The pure water tends to accelerate corrosion. Okay, you say, well, I can, I can clean the coils every year. I put muriatic acid on it, and I can clean all the, the calcium off. <laughs> you want to put acid on it? Uh, let's make it worse. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll rinse it all off. Well, it doesn't always work that way. The manufacturers really don't want you to use anything in an outdoor coil except uh, water. You know, you can spray it off with water and that's about it. The point of this video is there's no good way to do these things without some downsides. Now, is there you know, can you actually do this at all? Does it, is there some way to make it work and 
and help. Okay, it does reduce head pressure a little bit and power usage a little bit. And I think I would probably consider using something like this in very high temperatures, above 100 degrees, uh, older units uh, that are uh, very low sear, that's efficiency rating, uh, a unit that was made in the 80s, up until the late 80s, uh, you might use it a little bit of the time, you know, at high temperatures, and it might help a little bit. But you have to understand something about these things. If you do lower the head pressure on an air conditioner, that's good when the ambient is high. But what about when the ambient's low? Now right now, it's high summer where I am. It's not a real hot area, but we've had some hundred plus days. And I monitor my air conditioner uh, every day. Yesterday, or no, day before yesterday was 103. Uh, 104, 103, something like that. And the air conditioner ran all night. It didn't stop when the sun went down because the house and everything around it is all heated up. It's all warmed up from, from that uh, uh, sun beating down all day. When the sun's gone, oftentimes the air temperature drops considerably and we could have temperatures in the 60s, sometimes the low 60s overnight. Well, when you have something like that happen, I mean, we really don't like running air conditioners but below about 70 or 80 degrees outdoor ambient because the head pressure doesn't build up high enough. Well, in this case, you could have the 60s and then you're spraying water on it too. That's going to lower the head pressure down even more. And guess what? When you lower the head pressure down too low, the efficiency goes away. So you're losing efficiency at night. And you're maybe gaining a little bit during the day. So overall end result I wouldn't use them at all unless I had a very old air conditioner at very high temperatures and I'd have to shut them off at night. Uh, the use of these things for any length of time, especially in the high desert areas and stuff like that where it's, they're used a lot, where they're running a bunch, you're going to damage the coil and the little filter is not going to make any difference because it's not really a filter, it's just a treatment device that's supposed to grease those little particles of calcium. So, I hope this makes sense to everybody, and that's it on this one.